There was one yes. who was willing my Lord, to die in my stead. Yes. So that the soul so unworthy. 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 Hallelujah. A soul so unworthy. I 
as if he could do it by himself. He picked up himself. God sent him out to live like a beast. The Bible says his nails came down like a claw. There's no power for it. When people heard about Nebuchadnezzar in those days, they feel it. Nebuchadnezzar the king has made a decree. The people fear. Everybody fear. And I thought about it that there's no power. But there's no power. He's ordained by God. No matter who or what I will. I will leave that. There is another scripture I want to look at. Philippians 20. Philippians 23. That's about my request. It says, Let's, if there be therefore any consolation, right? it's Philippians 23. If there be any consolation in Christ, if there is any comfort in love, if there is any fellowship in spirit, if there be any bowels of mercy, says Paul writing to the Philippians, he's talking about the mind of, mind of Christ. Fulfill ye my joy that he be like-minded. Let having the same love be of one accord of one mind, let nothing be done through strife of in glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. I don't know why I have to be in probably feel it is true. It is true. So it is true. If there be any consolation in Christ, if there be any comfort in love, if there be any fellowship in spirit, if there be any bowels of mercy, fulfill my joy. My joy. Fulfill my joy. I would like my joy to be fulfilled. I would like to be complete. Be he like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, one accord, one mind. And let's say, let nothing be done through strife. And then, talk to the church now. Amen, amen. Let's talk to the church. Amen. Nothing should be done to strife. Our oh, vain glory. Mm -hmm. That means say, I don't take any glory from no, 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 no. Because God said, I will not give my glory to another. No, 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 no. So we have to be sure that whatever we do mm -hmm. or say, no. the glory of God is the glory. Amen. God must get the glory. God be glorified. Let nothing be done to strife, vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. With humbleness, humility, humbleness. And you think about it. We must esteem each other better than ourselves. And in the one of one stages, Paul said, I consider myself the least yes, among the brethren. Brethren, that's, that's where God wants us to be. Amen. That's where God wants us to be. Yes. Not to be lifted up. Yeah. I'm talking about powers. Belshazzar saw what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And God raised up Belshazzar. Because he succeeded. He succeeded Nebuchadnezzar. 
And when he succeeded, Nebuchadnezzar, he did not regard the God who delivered his father. And he went into the house of the Lord, took those vessels with his, and have, which was sanctified. So he think he could do what he likes. And then he saw the writing on the wall as the Lord was told. God bless you. Another thought the Lord put on my heart. We are in some troubled times. Somebody said we are in some serious time. And we are in some serious time. A serious time requires serious measures. Amen. The Bible says the speed, the spirit, speed, expressly, expressly, expressly. There was a time, and I'm taking from Matthew 22 now. The Spirit of God is leading off in the Scriptures. Matthew 22, verse 15, listen to this. And when the Pharisees and took counsel that they might entangle him in his talk, so Jesus is there teaching, and the Pharisees think, let's find a way to tangle him up. Tie him up. Let's find a way to tie him up in his talk. And they sent unto him, unto his disciples, with Herodian, Herodian, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teaches the way of truth. Neither cares thou for any man, nor regardest the person of man. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their weakness and said, and they brought unto him a penny. And he said, say unto him, then he said unto them, who is, then he said unto them, Caesar, they said unto them, who is this insignia on it? As a company from um, verse 19, when they brought unto him a pen and said unto him, They said unto him, This Caesar's. Then he says, He heard the words, said, Marvel not, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And you have that scripture here from Matthew 15, verse 20, verse 19. And can you read that for me, somebody? From verse 19, then. You have it. Show me the tribute money, and they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is the image and superscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. That said he unto them. Hmm. Remember therefore, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Thank you. God bless you. They wanted to tie Jesus, mm -hmm. so they put a penny to Jesus and said, Whose signet is it? So, should we give tribute to Caesar? Mm -hmm. Should we give tribute to Caesar? Mm -hmm. They tried to tie him up, as the Bible says. Jesus Christ showed the penny. Whose signature is that? It's a Caesar. Well, give unto Caesar that which belongs to Caesar. And that belongs to God, give unto God. Now, we don't have the problem paying our taxes and whatever we need to pay, what the government says we should pay. Because it's, it's for Caesar's money. We don't have the problem submitting. To Caesar. Caesar made it. Mm -hmm. So maybe the house will live in if Caesar said, you need to move up, we need to move up because Caesar made it. Mm -hmm. 
But when it comes to us, our spirit, mind, body belong to God. So what we do with what God give us is what we do with what God give us, what we choose to do. Because the Bible says, ye are the temple, ye are God. Our body belongs to God, our soul belongs to God, our mind belongs to God. We belong to God. Our body do not belong to Caesar. Our soul do not belong to Caesar. Our mind do not belong to Caesar. So we need to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And what belongs to God, give God. And that's why David says, I will praise the Lord with all that is in me. All that is in me. And the Bible says, we have one commandment, two commandments that we should follow. Serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Body, body mind, and soul belong to God. Everything else we see, belong to Caesar. Belong to Caesar. So Jesus said this to them. We have to realize that God made us. The breath we breathe. If God takes this breath away, we finish. So our very being, my brother and sister, I want to go step by step. The breath we breathe, the life we live, is of God, not of Caesar. The life we live has nothing to do with Caesar. So our life, our mind, our heart, our body belongs to God. But one more thing. This is the being a good minister. So it's 24, and verse 4. It says the Spirit speak expressly, expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of the devil, speaking lies in hypocrisy, and having their conscience sneer. during this time now for us to shuffle up, shake up, dress up and dress down and look good for God. Time for us now. There's no, no play time. Play, play time finish now. Devil is not playing. And what we see going on around us, the devil is not playing. He's working overtime. Trying to us, trying to push us back, push us back. But the songwriter says, "Onward still, it's Jehovah's will." While the billows touch and spray. Then Hebrews chapter three, verse twelve says, "Here now, take heed, brethren, take heed, brethren, lest any be of any any lest there be any of you, any of you, lest." Hebrews 12, Hebrews 3 verse 12, least any of you an evil heart of unbelief in the parting from the living God. Take heed. That's the me. I have to take. I have to take heed. I have to take heed. Be careful. Least an evil heart of unbelief in the parting from the living God. But it says here now, listen, it says here now. But it's exhort. Exhort. Have one another. Daily. 
exalt one. This is just to make sure that the spirit of unbelief don't come upon us. Yeah. It is for us to we have to be on our mark. Yeah. We have to stand to attention yeah. with the word of God. We have to stand on firm like soldiers yeah. in the world. Stand on firm. Exalt one another daily. That means that we must try and meet up. We must try and meet up and exhort, encourage. Your word and my word, and we add word and we take word, a word upon word, precepts upon precepts, and we build our spiritual house. Be but exhaust one, exhaust one another daily while it is called a day. While it is called today. Today. While it is called today. Least any of you harden through deceitfulness of sin. Sin is very deceitful. Very deceitful. And none of us can say what we, we can. We, we can make it ourselves. We can, we can, we can win the storm ourselves. We can walk through the fire ourselves. We can go through the flood by ourselves. None of us can say that. No. We need God and we need the Word of God in us. And I'm so glad that, you know, the Lord has give us His Word. I tell you something, every time I read the Word of God, it's just coming up like a deep ocean, like I'm going down in the deep ocean. I didn't even know the ocean was so deep. I was watching something the other day. They said the ocean is about 20, 20 and thousand feet down into the sea. 20 and thousand feet. And then the ocean bottom yet. So the Word of God is so deep. But the more we get into it, the deeper, the more the more it draws in. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have not too much time left. So, this, this, I would like to read a scripture that I came to me about an un, unmerciful servant. Mm -hmm. I was take we can put it up on both of them, please. And Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter eighteen. Matthew chapter eighteen. So, okay, I will read it. Matthew chapter eighteen. Okay, go starts. Matthew chapter eighteen, from verse twenty-one. It says, "Then came Peter unto him. That is unto our Lord. Peter came unto him and said, Lord, how often, how often should?" Shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Seven, seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Matthew 18, 22, 23 now. Therefore is the kingdom of God likened unto a certain king, the kingdom of God is like unto a certain king who took, who, who would take account of his servant. And when he had begun to reckon, what was brought unto him who owed him ten thousand talents? But for as much as he had not, not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children. And all that he had, and payment he made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosing, and forgiving his debt. But well, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him one hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what I pay me what you owe us. His fellow servant fell down at his feet. And besought him, saying, 
have patience with me, and I will pay thee. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till thou should pay the debt. So when the fellow servants saw that was done, they were very sorry, and came and told the Lord all that was done. Then the Lord, after he has called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all the thy debt, that debt, because thou desirest me. She does not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even I had pity on thee. And his Lord was of wrath, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise, thy heavenly Father do also unto you, if he from the dear heart, from your heart, forgive not everyone of the brother of the church sisters. That's a lesson for us, Christian. D. It's D. So this servant holds his master 10,000 talents. And he asks his master, Master, I will pay, have compassion. And his master had compassion and forgive him of his debt. And he was free. He was free. It's like us when God saved us, we're free. But remember, sometimes some people, sometimes someone hurt us. Sometimes someone tries to bless against us. Sometimes someone does something bad that we don't like. Sometimes someone hurt us. Sometimes someone pain us and cause us sorrow and pain. And so the Bible tells us because we were in debt to the master and our debt to the master was way up there. And the debt that our fellow servant owed us is there. Because it's 10,000 talents that he holds his Lord. And it was a few hundred talent. His servant, his fellow friend, owed him. So he got a great remission, a great remission, a lot of things. And it should fell servant from a small, small, very small. And he wanted it. He didn't realize, but well, you know, it's the nature of us, it's our nature. We don't think of where we're coming from. We just think about where we want trying to go, get, where we're going. And this servant was thinking about himself alone. It's okay, my master, forgive me, but I cannot forgive. And brethren, we, it's a, this is a parable. A parable is an earthly story, but it has an heavenly meaning. So God is telling us, you know what he's telling us? Make sure our heart is right. Make sure we don't have anything against anyone. Make sure so we can look inside our heart, look at the brother, look at the sister, look at whosoever and say, my heart clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God look in the heart yeah, yeah. like a looking glass. Yeah, yeah. And I know if I have something against anybody here. Yeah, yeah. If God know, yeah, yeah. he can't go by the and say, no, 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 no. But God know. Yeah, yeah. So we have to look inside ourselves. Yeah. The Bible says, let a man examine himself. We have self-examination. It's just like a mirror. And you look at the mirror and you see your face. And you know if you look good and you don't look good. <coughs> you know, like some people. My sister will spend a long time in the food. 
I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you have to have the patience of Job. How you more than the patience of Job to deal with them? I don't think. I'm telling you, there's something else. So she can't come. She has to stay with them. She needs them. They need 100% attention, 100% of the time. Well, I've gotten away from everything, and you know, God is working things out for us. So we're giving them praise, and we're giving them glory, and then um, continue to pray for us. Because we're all here, we are fighting together, and brethren, we want to go to one. We are going to one place, and we are going to meet up one day. Not on this earth, we're going to meet up. We're all going out in that first resurrection, and we're looking for that. We're looking forward, and it's a hope that we cherish that in vain. Because we know the Lord, whatever the Lord say, that He will do. Yeah. I have read Genesis from hope to Revelation, and every word of God is true. Yeah. And God stand by His word. Yeah. So, those uh, years, God has never failed. Yeah. I don't think He's going to fail us now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think He's going to fail us now, but yeah. yeah. He's not going to fail. And each one of us have a testimony. Yeah. Yeah. Every one of us here. Have a testimony of what God has done for us. Amen. So our God is not going to fail. Let us keep worshiping, serving Him. Amen. And you know, I need the blessings. God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us stand on. Thank you, Jesus. Reach out. Touch the Lord.